before we get rolling, um, I'm going to share the screen and then uh, we'll have a good time. So let me do that first. Uh, let's see here. Okay. I'm going to tell you ahead of time, I'm babysitting my niece. So if you hear like either giggle or the opposite of a giggle, you know why that's not coming out of my body. Um, so, you know, uh, let's see here. Okay, sweet. And then I'm gonna drop the link to real quick. So that way, if you want to have both zoom and the document with you, that's accessible to you as well. So let me do that. I could drop it real quick. Okay, so that should be. Let me know if y'all can open that okay. If not, I will make sure that happens at some point. Need it's prompting a request access for me. Gotcha. Okay, so what we do, what we'll do is when we jump into the writing prompt. I'll go ahead and offer that access and then I'll drop it into the, the chat real quick. Give me a second. Okay, so we'll, I'll, I'll facilitate that once we jump into a free write, but we will get started and then um, again, you'll have access to that. So uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Carla Cordero, pronouns she, her, hers. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give a huge shout out to Nada Colt and Daniel Lisi for once again offering a super dope space uh, for us to join in community and to write. Um, also shout out to all of you that are here this evening to just write and just enjoy uh, during uh, some chaotic times. Uh, as a reminder, the Venmo and the PayPal are there. So if y'all are able to and you want to drop a dollar, five dollars, please feel free to do so. Again, this is how I pay the bills. If you are not in a position to do so, do not stress. I'm just amped that you're here and joining us today. Um, so uh, real quick before we actually go into writing, um, in addition, if for some odd reason we got like tech issues, um, I start um, getting cut off, I jump out of Zoom, I'm delayed, audio issues, please feel free to jump onto the chat, wave Daniel down, and we'll help facilitate um, to get technology back in order. All right, um, so if y'all are good, if y'all got a notebook, something to write with, we will go ahead and jump in. Um, again, feel free to use the chat. If you hear something in a poem or in a comment that you love, please use the chat as like a side um, opportunity to have those conversations, um, as well as we have the bottom reactions of a thumbs up and a clap. So if y'all feel animated and wanna do so, use it to the best of your abilities, okay? Uh, I'm gonna jump here real quick. So before we go into a free write, um, our workshop is called Different Ways to Tell Your Story. Uh, the reason I named it that is, again, it was in reference to the, the information I put on the flyer. Uh, the poet Dorian Lux talks about sometimes we can run into writer's block. She likes to call it that we're half empty. How do we get full again? And the way we do that is by being out into the world as witness, as observational uh, individuals, reading everything, watching everything, and finally refining and building your craft within the genre or genres you write in, right? So we can build more tools onto the belt of what we do as artists. And it refines more of our ability to multitask in storytelling. And so when we're thinking about different ways to tell our stories, a lot of times we jump to the traditional confessional eye, right? Which is one of the most powerful ways to tell a story. And, and those are great, but sometimes we need to, we're trying to work through a story that could feel fragmented, recapturing a memory, um, a super complicated topic that many people have biases and belief systems within. And so when we can learn to gravitate and practice non-traditional forms of structure and uh, narrative, we offer not just answers in the exploration of discovery of self through the practice and usages of those forms, but we also provide different ways to talk about complicated issues. And at the same time, if this interests you at all, 
uh, when you're thinking about who reads your work, if that's important to you, all readers learn different ways, right? And so we can present a topic that's important to us, a story of the self in different ways. We create different windows. When we, cre when we create different windows, we create one that could be a potential door. So we not only offer the reader to look in, but to come in to our stories and say, now I get you. I know what you're trying to say here. And so when we reach beyond traditional forms of oral storytelling or presented it on page, we offer new and refreshing ways to invite a reader into like a really complicated topic or ourselves to discover our own identities through the digging and excavating of those complications. And so with that in mind, I'm gonna jump into a quick free write. So get ready to do that. Those of you that aren't familiar with the free write, that's okay. I'm gonna invite us for five minutes. You're going to look at this uh, piece of art and you're just gonna write without stopping. Five minutes and I'm gonna time it, I'm gonna write with you. You're welcome to write on the color an image you see within the art, um, the actual template and materials, watercolor and paper, anything that sparks of interest for you, let that flow from pen to paper for about five minutes, okay? If y'all have any questions, jump into the chat and let me know. And while that's going on, I'll make sure the document becomes accessible to everyone. Um, so I'll see y'all in five. Go ahead and give it, give it a go in five. I'm also gonna play a little music. So if you're not down with the music, that's okay too. Just put me on mute and I will see you in five. All right, have at it. See you.
All right, y'all have about a minute left. So last thought, last line, last phrase. Again, free read don't gotta be complete. You just got words down. Also, while you're finishing up, the Google link is now available over on the chat. So thank you all for your patience on that. All right, welcome back. Okay, so what I want y'all to do now before we leave the free write alone is I want you to get something to write with or if it's on your computer, use a highlighter. I just want you to circle like your dopest line or the most interesting line or a line that you're like, I could do something with that. I could expand that. Um, some of y'all get real ambitious and circle the whole thing. That's okay too. So give yourself a couple seconds to do that. Okay, so you want to slowly make your way back. I hope you just did a lot of word vomit, a lot of good stuff on the page. Um, for those of you, some of you that might be curious, um, if we scroll down and you're interested who the artist is, um, that is my niece. Her name is Zoe Ramos Cordero. Uh, this is her first painting and her first painting out into the world. Um, she doesn't know, so don't tell her, okay? Um, and this was her first illustration, but I wanted to see what y'all can branch out of. And so for the first non-traditional form of storytelling that I wanted to introduce you to is called an ekphrastic poem. Some of y'all might be familiar with an ekphrastic poem, some of you might not, and that's okay. Uh, so an ekphrastic poem is if you choose to use these pieces of writing and develop them into an existing piece of work that you want to send out into the world, read out loud, share with others. An ekphrastic poem is when you look at a piece of existing art, music, pop culture, film, a sculpture, and you use that as a starting point or a gateway into the story you want to tell, right? So if y'all look at the piece of art, right? If we had time and heard everybody's free rights, we're gonna get a different story, right? Because that's because you were all tapping in to your own narrative, when in reality, a one-year-old um, Picasso did, and then y'all said the story that needed to be said through, right, your pen and paper. And so as you move forward, just think of, if you develop this piece, this is theoretically an ekphrastic poem. So again, anytime you listen to a music, to a music, to a song, and you're inspired to write something, off of that song, off of that beat, off of that sculpture or piece of art, you are now engaging in ekphrastic writing, writing that is influenced by an existing text, okay? So just throwing that out there for you all. So if you develop this further, y'all know what you just made, okay? We're now gonna jump into another uh, non-traditional form of writing. Um, there's no proper name for it. I just call it synonyms. Um, it's something I've been seeing a lot in, in writing that I think is super fascinating. And so synonyms is when we create a list or a phrase of an extension of a concept we wanna explore further. So the poems we're gonna look at in a second explore the concept of border. And because border is such a social political topic, there's so much to say, and where do you start? You start from your own experience, right? And so 
when we think about telling our stories through synonyms, we can use synonyms again through your voice and through your experience to not only create a general understanding of a term, but it, it, be it becomes this kind of decolonizing and expanding beyond the general, breaks down stereotypes, and is also this kind of rescripting, reclaiming of misconceptions that people may have about a concept or idea. Um, some people like to reach for synonyms because the, the concept's super big. Um, some people go to synonyms because it helps them kind of create these words of association that help unravel and peel open to the center of a story that needs to be told. Uh, so we're going to jump into the first poem uh, so we could see two samples and then we'll have some time to create our own. Uh, this is called Synonyms for Border. This is by a beautiful poet named Brandon Melendez. He has an absolutely awesome book called Gold That Frames the Mirror by R Bright Bloody. So if y'all haven't checked it out, please check it out. Uh, he couldn't be here with us today, but um, if anybody out there would love to read the poem and, and do me that favor, that would be fantastic. And then we'll talk about it for a second. So anybody interested in reading Synonyms for Border? And, and maybe just like unmute yourself or maybe jump in the chat and let me know if you're interested. So, so that way I'm not here talking the whole time, right? Uh, anybody out there? Y'all feel like reading? Okay, cool. Uh, the first I can, Elaine, I hope I said that correct. Elaine, is that? Is that yeah, you did. Sweet. Okay, Elaine, if you do us the honor, that'd be fantastic. Synonyms for border. Fringe, a fraying boundary, a line separating two political or geographical areas, especially countries. Countries that flood in and out of each other's gaping bodies, and a body of water that does not end with the horizon. The edge of the map and, a go and the ghost ships anchored there. Gold that frames the mirror. Petroleum coating the tongue with coins the limit of geography unmarked by bloody hands. Acepto, am I saying that right? Of eyes refusing to close. The end of an ex executive order and the dead that come after. Flank, surrounded by steel. The curve of a coral and the horse's jaw, broken jaw. The distance two people cross to say I love you the emptying of language and the bodies that unspool in its wake. Hey, thank you so much, Elaine. I appreciate that read. Okay, so I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds, um, a minute, 30 seconds is, is too, too little for this piece. But um, when we think about synonyms and when we think about the border, right? Think about something really unique and refreshing and original that Brandon is doing in this poem that you wouldn't see in Webster's Dictionary, right? Um, and what would make these lines unique to Brandon's experience of the border. So I'll give you maybe a minute, choose a line that you love, a line that feels original, a line that's so, that's refreshing to this idea of like synonyms for the border. I'll give you all about a minute. Yeah, and some of y'all can type it into the chat, gold that frames the mirror. I love that, there's so much depth there in the history of gold in the framing, in the confinement of that, the distance two people cross to say, I love you, absolutely fantastic. The curve of a corral in the horse's broken jaw, right? The violence through the domestication of animals, the edge of the map, right? The end of the map, no more travel, no more land, no more distance. The edge of the map and the ghost ships anchored there the haunting that lingers, gaping bodies. Honestly, they are all amazing. I agree. <laughs> so you're doing all a good job of just finding lines that are super original, gaping bodies in relation to countries. Yes, 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 yes. And some of you that are curious about the punctuation, that's called a cejura. A cejura is when we create pauses within poetry through empty space, 
um, use of unique punctuation. Uh, so the colons and the lines functioning as almost these like borders or ladder imagery, in case you're curious, or commas. So a sejura can create those pauses in between uh, phrases so we pay attention to each synonym at a time. So notice that Brandon's using synonyms as single words and built phrases, right? So there's a lot of opportunity to kind of construct images. It's always image and action heavy on what your synonyms would look like for a word. Uh, can you spell that word, please? Absolutely, I'll do that in a second. If not, someone jump on there and do that for me. Is that a common symbol? Uh, or was that intentional by the poet? Unfortunately, Brandon couldn't come in. Um, I almost had him sneak in today, but he couldn't make it. Um, I wouldn't know, I would have to talk to the poet um, himself, but if anybody has like any interpretations on that regard, I've always seen it as these kind of like defining border walls uh, that the poet is cleverly using the, the punctuation. So not only a pause, but a separation and a segregation and a distance between language, right? So not only is language lack of fluid, but it's like segregated with that intent. Um, so we can do all kinds of cool interpretations of what the punctuation's trying to do. Um, but yeah, um, did anybody else want to share anything uh, for this poem regarding like what it's doing? Um, anything that kind of caught your attention that that wasn't spoken about yet? If anybody wanted to jump on? Uh, I just wanted to pop in and um say there's something interesting in like continuation that he does because he says lines separating two political or geographical areas especially countries mm -hmm. countries that flood in and out of each other's gaping bodies yes. a body of water that does not and so he like continues on these ideas mm -hmm. um and having them birth new ideas which was really cool yeah i love that thank you uh, thank you, Fox. I think that's what popped up, but thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and so there's also this uh, reinvention, uh, metamorphosis of the, of, the, of the border and the water and how countries then become bodies and bodies that um, are doing this kind of particular interaction, which is super fascinating. Uh, so I want you to just kind of hang on to that poem and continue to think about how synonyms can be super powerful ways to create phrases and language that help dissect a more personal understanding of an idea or a concept. Uh, we're gonna go to the next poem uh, by another amazing poet that I love so much. Uh, Vanessa Angelica Villarreal wrote the poem, uh, excuse me, the collection called Beast Meridian, and this is one of her poems called Border Semiotics. Uh, can I get a volunteer to read this poem? There's some Spanish in it, so don't feel intimidated if, if you want to read, but you don't know the Spanish, you could just kind of work your way through it. You have our full support, uh, but anybody interested in reading? I'll love you like five more points. Like you'll get points by the end of workshop. So Fox got five points right now. I could go ahead and read if you'd like. Hey, Rocio got five points. Thanks, Rocio. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. Um, border semiotics. Rags of plaited blood on bone on Walmart t-shirt threaded with work on raw hand and wood. Brained in silver, bloody tooth, cloth missing chancla, a pack truck toward the destiny star to enter the gold pear night ghost in an elk eye land of cold evenings illegal par norte way pa gozar pa comprar botas y trocas y casas pa mi vieja pa mis hijos pa mi mamá pa mi papá porque me da la chingada gana porque me lo merezco órale a jalar con ganas mijito mijita dreamer milk north milk honey milk Ma, milk, truck, milk, maid, milk, child, milk, milk, fuck, fuck, milk. Promised land, anchor baby, beaner, cheech, cholo, chuco, clown car, coyote, dirty, Sanchez, fence, hopper, gordita, greaser, illegal, jumping bean, manual labor, excrement, pachuco, pole digger, roach, spick, the hugger, vato, wetback. Freedom of speech, day of the dead edition, Starbucks Mexican shade, 
grown organic fair trade coffee with Mexican hot chocolate and cinnamon jalapeno. Free Saint bracelet included Virgen de Guadalupe tattoo. Free trade manifest destiny market, market, market. Tattered corpse disintegrates on XY. Access flesh ripens purple, a flush rot and tongue, a plane of flies. If you drown in the river, blessed are the meek, invisible. Awesome, Gracio, thank you so much for that read. Okay, y'all, so again, let's hit the chat again, um, or just kind of go ahead and speak out loud. Like when we're thinking of synonyms, I wanted to show you like another version of the same concept for border, right? And so um, we have here Vanessa doing her own perspective and her own work of language that circulates within the politics of border and border space. Uh, did anybody want to jump in and talk about uh, a particular section that called to them or the kind of synonyms that are being used? Maybe phrasing that feels, again, new, memorable. Can I share? Yes, please. Um, so I found it very confusing, but at the same time, I really loved it. I like I'm confused. Yeah, I understand. And I don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was really interesting. Um, yeah. And, and was that Corrine? That was Belen. Oh, Belen. Belen, thank yeah. you. Belen. Sorry, I see a little. Uh, the, I'm just following. The yeah. <laughs> Belen, thanks for joining us. Yeah, so I think confusion is part of what this poem wants to do, right? Again, when we're thinking about border, it's super complicated, right? Um, we're misinformed, it's dehumanized, it's humanized. And so I think going through the experience of this poem, Belém, and feeling confused but liking it at the same time is the work and complication of what border and the exploration is, of that concept is trying to do in this piece. Um, when you said, I like it, Belém, was there a section that you're like, but this part's dope. I, I'm feeling this section. Like, was there one you were drawn to? Yeah, I think it was the illegal part. I love, that was hilarious to me. And I, I don't know, I guess it just resonated a lot. <laughs> yeah. All of it, pal norte way, pa gozar. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes me think of, I guess, my community yeah absolutely right the uh, same so a lot of folks are connecting with that as well and some folks are putting in a lot of lines that they like okay cool yeah and so begin to think about also um vanessa's really unique way of like revealing the word that's associated with those synonyms till the end right thinking about like what the list of synonyms and phrases that don't have periods by the way it's all one fluid run through and then you get the reveal at the end that is then bordered in between this new level of understanding. And then we don't get the reveal of that word till we finish it, right? And so what's really unique about this poem is it's not only creating a list of synonyms, but a really complicated way in how we're engaging and interacting and being revealed with information. Can anyone translate this? Uh, Spanish section? Oh, the Spanish section. Um, let me see. I mean, there's a couple Spanish sprinkled throughout. Um, I don't know if Rocio wants to jump in, but if not, also think about how do we engage with a poem that isn't, that's in another language that we don't know and how can we appreciate it for its musicality or what it means not to fully understand what is being said in that moment and how does that play into the poem as a whole, right? Um, Rocio, maybe without um, translating like a particular section, do you want to take us to a particular section and maybe just talk about like what that moment's about? Um, it's the illegal section, I'm assuming. Pal norte way pa gozar para comprar botas. I'm assuming it's a male mm -hmm. that um, is going to cross the border. Um, so he could provide a better life for his family. Mm -hmm. Basically. 
Thanks, Rocio. Yeah, so the, yeah. there's these different voices that are being interjected mm -hmm. in between um, these kind of explorations of the, of the phrases illegal and dreamer, promised land, freedom of speech, and so forth. At, in regards to the type of style, does it have a name? I'm not too sure myself. Um, I just know that we have Vanessa playing with a lot of language and phrases that are in conversation with these different sections or, you know, again, to the language that's easily used and, sh and pushed around within the conversation of border politics. Um, I wish we had Vanessa here to ask her herself, unless anybody is familiar with this poem and knows or has heard her um, talk about this piece. Um, but, you know, it's some kind of experimental hybrid. Um, again, the lines intentionally also doing that work. Uh, let me see if I got everyone here. Um, I think it's an enjambin opposite of the Sejura in the last poem. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, and and um, Nor just spelled uh, Sejura also there. So if y'all needed that spelling, it's there. Okay. Anybody else wanted to jump in and talk about this poem? Anything else that kind of captured you regarding synonyms or the use of language to expand an idea or concept? It almost feels like a, a play, this one, the border semiotics, it's like characters in a play, different perspectives. It's almost, I feel like when I was reading it, I would see a flash of a different character coming onto a stage. Mm, I like that, yeah. And so again, maybe thinking about the, the use of even personification and turning it, the, con the big concept of illegal into like a manifestation of its own character, right? Mm -hmm. So it totally has that, script layout kind mm -hmm. of yeah i'm feeling that rocio i like that that's a good read uh, uh, hi. can i add <laughs> please please um i think it, the way that she's using the synonyms it, it talks to a very personal perspective like that's because some words here uh those things are used in a specific region in mexico not in all mexico or like some other words down on, uh, I think it was like uh, down there, uh, Dirty Sanchez and all those things are very, like if you know about the topic, if you are connected within this community and know what this means and makes you mm. feel, um, gives you a whole different story from someone that it's probably from somewhere else or something like that. But I, it's very interesting the use of the synonyms in this poem. Right. Thank you for that. And then who, who was that that just spoke? I, I couldn't see the little. Andra. Andra, Andra, thank you so much for that insight. That's the other beautiful work about this poem too, is that when you cleverly choose your synonyms, you're, you're also now, again, when we talk about like decolonizing misconceptions about, um, you know, Mexico as like one big like circle, you know, one big like community. It's like, no, we're actually mm -hmm. very different people from different locations who have different cultures, traditions and languages. And I'm gonna insert that piece of identity in here to create that clarification. So that's the power and beauty of synonyms is doing that work as well. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, so with that being said, I wanna invite y'all to go into our first prompt um, our first prompt is the following, and we will have about 15 minutes, um, and uh, let's do maybe 12 minutes, um, just to honor time, because I know we got a little delayed with the tech issues. 12 minutes, here's what you got to do, all right, is the invitation. Choose only one of the words below and create your own list of synonyms for that word using your own experiences, your histories, language, culture, religion, and or you can use other resources like Google, stats, and so forth. Uh, format a poem in the form of your choosing. So if you notice Brandon versus Vanessa's visually look very different, but this idea of breaking apart synonyms for an original concept remain the same. So the words I kind of threw down there that I've been hearing a lot lately, lately is border, mask, quarantine, joy, light, and love. So just choose one of those and allow that to be your branch into the synonyms of your own understanding for that word. Additional options are, if it helps, start with the phrase synonyms for, so if I want to write about the light, synonyms for light. You could use that as your title or the first line to what you want to write. Second is if you're, if you're not like inspired or interested in the words I offered, 
choose your own word, choose your own phrase, and, and then start your branching out. If you finish early, the other interesting exercise is then do a list of antonyms. What would be the antonyms, the opposite of that, of that word or phrase you want to explore? So if you have any questions, pop into the chat and let me know. Um, I'll see you all in 12 minutes. 12 minutes and then we'll, we'll talk for a bit. And again, don't stress, try it out. Um, I'll see y'all in 12.
Okay, y'all got about one more minute. So again, you want to finish that last line, last word, last phrase. It don't got to be done, but you got something down. to slowly make the return back welcome back welcome back from synonyms y'all were in the pool of words and phrases i hope you came up with some good stuff um i do want to open the floor for maybe a few minutes um if anybody wanted to share what they wrote uh maybe the word they chose and then maybe you can read the whole piece if you want a line or just talk about the process whatever you're comfortable doing um the floor is yours for the next few minutes You can also jump in the chat if you don't feel like verbally sharing and you just want to talk about what you wrote, you could do that too. I'll jump in. I chose love. Awesome. Um, as synonyms, I have respect, acceptance, self-analysis, Bonnie, Burnett, touch, admiration, patience, pillars, codes, Signals, gaze, equality, laugh, sun, sunshine, moon, mood swings, evolving, discovery, adaptation, growth, family, kisses, humanity, sex, lips, travels, adventure, responsibility, courage, loyalty, matching shoes, secrets, morning coffee, surprises, and bath. Hey, awesome. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much. And then uh, was is it says Andres on your screen. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I love the musicality too of the piece. Uh, signals, mood, mood swings, hisses. So you got a lot of beautiful music as well. But I love how the music also evolves with the synonyms. Um, pillar, signals, equality. It's all great. It's a great list. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I'll share. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, hi. Um, my name's Corinne, and so it's just like a couple of thoughts from it, but I chose mask as my word, and uh, keeping me far away from you, creating distance between who I am and what you see, my personal border, worked in the border there, um, my fence to keep you smiling and keep me safe. Hmm. I'm writing it down. I like your last line. My fence, my fence to, wait, what was that last line? To keep you smile. Oh, just unmute yourself. Sorry. Sorry. My fence to keep you smiling and keep me safe. Hmm. I love that line so, so much. And I love that the fence evolves from smiling and safety, which is super beautiful. Thanks, Corinne. Uh, Melissa, did you want to go next? And then we'll have um, Elango after. Yeah. Um, so I have like lists within lists. Synonyms for love. Baked goods. Mm. Chocolate cream pie, pecan pie, coconut cake, carrot cake, chocolate crinkle cookies, glazed donuts. Homemade candy. Turtles, Scotcheroos, Divinity, Rocky Road, Rum Balls, Peanut Butter Balls, Peanut Brittle. Grass, Fescue, Rye, Sweet, Nut, Tall, Short, Golf Course. Onion Fields, 10 Acres, 20, five and a half, Red, Yellow, White, Colors of the Medicine Wheel. Stars, Haley's Comet, Sun, Neowise, Milky Way, Ancestral Fires, Aurora Borealis in my womb. Touch, hand, foot, collarbone, clavicle, inside of wrist, inside of knee, behind the ear, mouth. Grief, grandma dies, grandpa dies, auntie dies, uncle dies, story dies, language dies, place. 
Ugh, tell me why I got all kinds of goosebumps. <laughs> you took me inside a knee, inside mm -hmm. a knee, collarbone, ancestral fires, womb, grandma dies, grandpa dies, story dies. Damn, woman, that was so good. Thank you, thank you for sharing. How'd that feel? How'd the, how'd the process feel? Good, really good. I thought I was going to use a different word. And then when it started coming, it was like, oh, I just wrote love and I started thinking of all the things. So oh, I love yeah. that. Thank you so much. And you got a lot of people throwing praise in the chat. So check oh, that out. There's a lot there. You. All right, Elaine, you ready? Yes. All okay. right, go for it. Border, frontera, invisible line which says they're different when you cross it. Visible line stamped by the man who wants it. Metaphorical line that dances between opportunity and violence. Discriminatory line that puts the weight of others' pride and prejudice on ellos. A line so defined by the machinery and their red caps. Mm -hmm. A line so minute that won't stop us. Nicely done. And I love that you play on the concept of the reinvention of the line. Right, and that line can do a lot of uh, violent and dis uh, a lot of discriminatory work. So the visible line stamped by the man who wants it, right? Uh, the machine. So you're doing a lot of good work there with this kind of understanding of what the line means and how that plays into the role uh, of the border and the frontera. Thank you so much for sharing that. Love it. All right, anyone else before we move on to our final, um, non-traditional form of narrative storytelling. Anybody else out there? I'd love to share if I can. Yes, please. And then who is that? I'm looking for the little, um, is that Bianca? Yeah, that was me. I'll mute myself for now though. Oh, oh, okay. Did you want to share Bianca? Oh yeah, sorry. I thought someone else was going to share, but yeah. Oh, oh, did someone else uh, collide with Bianca? Yeah, Fox. <laughs> All right, let's do Fox and Bianca. Um, whoever wants to go first. Ready. I'm unmuted, so I'll just go for it. Um, so uh, these were my favorites from Synonyms for Light. Mm -hmm. Another morning, a dying bulb, the towel ripped from my body, the opposite of my body, my body having finally left, a coating of the skin, a revealing of secrets, a privilege to afford, comfort for the sleeping child, monster protection, the blooming Hoya, what allows us to be real, the stage upon which all that exists can exist, mm. the empty lunchbox, medicine. Mm. Thank you. I'm just writing all these lines down because y'all inspire me and then I'm gonna go back and then borrow them, but I'm gonna copyright you all. <laughs> A dying bulb, the opposite of the body, the monster protection. Like, come on now, come on. Thank you for sharing that. Lots of good lines. And here's the cool thing about the synonyms exercise is that it gives you permission to jump into like the most bizarre, unique images and they all hold together because you have that one original word to do that work for you. And so I have to do the work as the reader to be like, lunchbox, empty lunchbox. And then you're like, oh shit, you know? And so I love, 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 love the language and the images you're bringing to the table for the synonyms exercise. Awesome. Um, and then I think, was there one more person? Yeah. Please. All right, I did synonyms for mask. Awesome. Covers, who are you? The symbol of 2020, separation, intentional eye contact, costumes and disconnect, makeup, leaving the house without makeup. My dog knows it's time for a walk, the layers of conditioning. Hmm. I, I love your... I love how you reinvent the language of like costumes, disconnect, makeup, no makeup. And so it, it's, it's a really fun play in like repeating and reinventing um, certain language and sounds. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay, gang. So, and if you want to share more, like please feel free to drop into um, the chat and these are conversations we can have even more um, after the the workshop so please know it doesn't end here and continue to work on those pieces so I am so excited to introduce the last form 
Um, as I mentioned on social media, there was going to be a special secret guest, originally two, now down to one, but I'm so excited to have them here joining us. Um, the form I want to, last and final form I want to introduce you to is called a contrapuntal. Now, for those of you that haven't heard of a contrapuntal, it is basically a poem that has multiple poems. So it's kind of like choose your own adventure on how you want to engage with the poem. Usually the poems are set up in columns and you can read each column as its own or you can read it together, all together horizontally as a one singular unified piece. And you're like, what did you just say? I promise it's gonna make sense in a minute. Um, so before uh, we jump into the poem, our guest joining us today is Gabriel Cortez. He is the wonderful author of this chat book. He was slinging for a minute. Gabriel, I don't know if you're still doing that, but I'm so happy to own a copy of Hopping Fences. Um, please follow him. Uh, his IG is Gabriel M. Cortez. It'll be at the end of the chat as well. Um, I met Gabe at a writing workshop at Bona, uh, facilitated by Willy Perdomo. And I loved, I'm, I'm so um, full of life and excited when I hear Gabe's poems. Um, they feel like home, but they also feel like a lot that I want to learn. Um, I want to learn from and he's just full of energy full of joy full of language that begs and demands to dance constantly and so our introduction to the first poem contrapuntal i would love to invite gabe to come read his contrapuntal and then i will ask him a couple questions about uh the piece he wrote so gabe are you out there hi yeah hey what's up you want to say hi to the people What's up, everybody? It's been so lovely getting to hear y'all's work. And thank you so much for that sweet introduction, Carla. Like, what? <laughs> this, is, this is also really cool, too, because you mentioned we were going to be looking at contrapuntals. And like, word, I didn't know it was going to be this one. This is great. I haven't looked at this in a long time. Oh, good, 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 good. And then um, for folks that might ask, are you? is this still available if folks want to get a, cop a copy of that? or? Um, Not really. But if you send me enough money, I'll, I'll print one for you and send it to you. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. I like that. So, um, Gabe, if you would do us the honor of reading this piece, and then we'll talk about it for a second. Of course. Awesome. Thank you. So, Ghetto Gourmet. Ghetto. Good food is difficult to find. What's available? The liquor store. The sodium high. The belly learns digest anything. Gourmet, in art form you eat. Lavishly priced, handcrafted, in season, high standards. An Epicurean palate will even itself. Ghetto gourmet. Good food is an art form, difficult to find. You eat what's available. The lavishly priced liquor, handcrafted in store. The seasoned sodium. High, high standards. The belly learns an Epicurean palate will digest anything, even itself. Hey, thank you so much, Gabe. I appreciate that reading. Um, so when I'm talking about multiple poems existing within a single poem, and I was also interested to see how Gabe was going to read it, um, Gabe, my first question is going to be, and you get in a lot of love in the chat, is, when we're talking about non-traditional forms of storytelling, like what drew you to reach for the contrapuntal versus a traditional like I narrative to tell the story? Like why did this form call you to, to do it this way? Yeah, great question. Um, so I live in a neighborhood in Berkeley, which has a really terrible name. It's called the Gourmet Ghetto. And I think that they recently changed that. Um, but being one of the few like black folks, people of color in this area, it's a trip, you know, it's like our relationship to ghetto, you know, and all the um, the stigma around it and the ways in which it's been like appropriated and, and capitalized on in this space made like a, a kind of dissonance that I wanted to play with and just kind of like get at the root of. And so um, the contrapuntal allowed for me 
to, you know, similar to what y'all were doing in terms of like synonyms and, and, and defining and redefining to have the space to have two ideas next to each other and to see what happens when they talk to each other too. Awesome. And then my next question, and thank you for that, because I'm, I myself, I'm, I'm still trying to like wrap my head around the process. So my next question is, is like, how do you start a contrapuntal? Do you write one poem first simultaneously? Do you go back and edit so it can kind of flow as a whole? What was your process? Uh, yeah, so I can talk about my process for sure. And I'm not yeah. sure like the way to do this. <laughs> you know, right, I, and you know what, that's the crazy thing. I don't know if there is a way, but I'm interested, yeah, I'm interested to pick your brain and see how you, what your journey was. Yeah, um, for this, hmm. I want to say, I think the process more than any other kind of like poetry making for me is um, for a contrapuntal, it's like making, it's like putting together a puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think with this piece, the left side, the left margin was kind of guiding what happened on the right. Um, I think that um, it was like writing three poems at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like you start off with good food is, um, and then that needs to work both on the horizontal line and on the vertical. So good food is an art form. Good food is difficult to find. And, and then the art form has to fit between the, you know, good food is an art form difficult to find. And then you have to kind of figure out that last puzzle, the, the fourth, I guess the bottom right in the quadrant, you eat. So good food is an art form difficult to find, you eat. An art form you eat and, and so on. And then um, I think once, I got a few lines down, um, you start to, I think, realize what the poem is kind of like guiding you towards. Um, I don't know if it was like, yeah, a narrative or, or it's like, oh, word, then, you know, you just start to build on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the, the few contrapuntals that I've written, um, one of my favorite things about them are the little enjambments that happen mm -hmm. where meaning spills over and shifts and I always love you know the last line to get to be like the biggest you know like the like um so I think when I got to the last line of digest anything even itself um I was like oh let's stop and maybe I just got lazy too so <laughs> but that felt enough for me at the time uh I appreciate that thank you and then Gabe you do have a question on the chat it says do you pick the topics you want to write about first or do you need to be do they need to be related Mm -hmm. I do. I do. And um, I think the contrapuntal, you know, it'll, I'll choose to use that form um, just where I'm just trying to see, yeah, what are ways to play with them next to each other. So I have another piece called like Black on Both Sides, um, mm -hmm. where they're, you know, uh, considering just my experiences of Blackness um, within the United States and in, in Panama and in the Caribbean, where my family's from, and just to see how those two can be in conversation with each other. I've seen other folks like, um, who I was really inspired by for this particular piece, like even having the little mini titles, the subtitles like at the top, um, there's a poem by Sam Sachs, who mm. in his book Madness, uh, I think I was really guided by how he did his contrapuntal. And, um, I have to, I can't remember what the two words were at the top of, uh, of each side, but um, it helped a lot to get to see how just that can guide it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you have to, but I know it helped, it helps me a lot. Right. No, I love that. Thank you. And if y'all are wondering to check out the other contrapuntal, that is in the anthology Latinx. Just so y'all know, page 22, you could check out Gabe's other contrapuntal, which is also fantastic. So thank you so much. Um, did anybody have other questions for Gabe regarding the contrapuntal process, uh, topic, subject matter? Um, I'm super open to taking those questions right now. If y'all want to hop in or jump in the chat before we move on. <laughs> How many drafts do you get, uh, get you here? How many drafts to, do you get to get here? I think is what they're saying. I don't know. Oh, Melissa. Okay. How many drafts did it take you to get to this poem? Got it. Thank you. Oh, man. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, and also I'll say, um, this is a topic that I think I've tried to, to write about in a lot of different ways. 
you know, like I've tried to write about gourmet ghetto in the form of erasures and the form of just like what story just leaps out and, and forms kind of lent themselves to that. So I don't, so I'm not sure how many contrapuntal versions of this I tried, but I, I will say that there was probably a couple years of different ways of trying to just approach this before mm -hmm. this popped out. And then someone said, is there a word minimum or maximum? No. Um, this is, yeah, this is pretty small. Like, that's really cool that you pointed out as 30 words total, or 38 words total. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen some contrapuntals, like uh, Teresa Siangatanu actually has one that was in Poetry Magazine um, that's actually three columns. And that one's huge. And I'm like, how? How? Why? And I remember she was just like, oh, yeah, I thought that's just how it goes. And so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Awesome. Any other questions? before we move on. And then uh, Gabe, if you want to hang out, I might call you back in a bit. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll hang out. And also um, if y'all want to talk about it, don't mind me. I'm really curious what y'all mm -hmm. think. And if you call it whack, I respect it. Go for it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Gabe. Um, everyone sends the virtual clap and uh, we love you for popping in and doing that. Thank you so much. Oh, um, I, I do have one question actually. I just noticed, um, I was wondering what the thought process was between the choice of um, like extra spacing between words, like in the third column under ghetto, what's available. And then there's quite a bit of spacing between the, and that happens uh, mm -hmm. store, the sodium, the handcrafted in. I was just curious about that. Oh yeah. So that's how I cheated and um, removed punctuation but kind of clued myself in about how I wanted kind of like meaning to um, be like contained. Nice, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that question, Belen. Awesome. And um, which Gabe uh, segues us to the next uh, poem, which is Teresa's poem. And it's really interesting because I would almost label this as like a hybrid between a necrastic kind of inspired by a film then formatted into a contrapuntal, which is fantastically done. Like you think two was hard, three is like, ah. So I, I don't know if anybody would be interested in reading it. I'm gonna give you the green light to read it however you want. Um, anybody out there interested? I'll read. Yay, thank you, Grin. Okay. Someone will touch the earth. Once I wanted my own soil, tried to drown my ankles in myself again. Daughter of Oceana wanting me home. My sin skin is sacred ground. I always want to take a white girl's skin. I cried so hard until I became a boat. I never wanted to be lost at high tide. Daughter of ancestors language tatted on my skin. My skin, what's mine, more than an ocean, floating above myself at sea, open mouth, sun on my body, my story will breathe. Someone will always want my skin, touch the earth to take what's mine. Once I wanted a white girl's skin, more than my own soil. I cried so hard, an ocean tried to drown my ankles, an ocean tried to drown my, drown my ankles until I became a boat, floating above myself, in myself. I never want to be lost at sea again. Daughter of Oceana at high tide. Daughter of open mouth sun wanting me home. Ancestors language tatted on my body. My skin is sacred ground. On my skin, my story will breathe. Thank you so much for that reading. Ah, I love this poem so much. And so again, I want you to think about how contrapuntals are not only confined to two columns, but you could do as many columns as you want. And again, this is kind of choose your own adventure. You could read each column. You could read it all horizontally. You could, there's so many ways to read this piece and it works, it works, right? And so when we're thinking about why contrapuntals do that work, as Gabe had mentioned, this kind of intersectionality of like two ideas, how do they stand alone? And then how do they become hybrids of each other to speak coherently at the same time? And so if there's subject matter, that's doing that work for you, a contrapuntal might fit that conversation, right? And so with that being said, I'm gonna jump into our last prompt 
and then uh, give y'all some time to write and then we'll share. So be patient with your contrapuntals. Again, if we run out of time, just let it be practiced that your mind is already in the process of just like, how do you put this thing together, right? As Gabe had said, many drafts, lots of patience, but starting is the first step. So you got two options for your contrapuntal. Option one, okay, is I want you to write a small response uh, based on uh, any of the phrases that I offered you below, or you can create your own phrase. Try to choose a phrase that contradict each other. Again, kind of like ghetto gourmet, and they can both be separated conversations that then also simultaneously talk to each other. Um, when you're done, again, make it as short or as long as you want it. Um, does it work as a single unit of poetry? Um, does it work as individual poems? Again, you can go back and edit and tweak so that way it flows coherently as one unit. Um, some options I provided below is like bittersweet, civil war, walking dead, soft rock, wise fool, awful good. Option two, if you choose to take that one, is more in conversation with identity of self. Um, so doing a contrapuntal in conversation of some examples, Mexican American, child of immigrants, black mother. If you can begin to see how there's one story to be told about just being a child and one story being told about immigrants and how that comes together, right? But I want you to choose a phrase that you're connected to. Um, again, there's no right or wrong way to write a contrapuntal. Again, I'm just kind of borrowing Gabe's method in two opposites, being individually in conversation with self and then bringing them together as a whole. So I'm gonna give us maybe about, uh, let's go for 12, 12 minutes again, and then um, we'll get a few folks to share and then we'll do a closeout. Um, if you have questions or you're struggling, please like message Gabe, message me. Uh, we can support you through the contrapuntals. Um, again, I'm gonna put a little music on and give it a try. Give it a try, y'all. See what you do in 12 minutes. Okay. See you in a bit. I'll be writing with you all.
All right, you got about 30 seconds. If you want to finish that last line, last thought. Some people are already spitting contrapuntals in the chat, and I am amazed. Uh, so I'll slowly uh, start lowering the music. 
Um, obviously, we're going to go over a little bit of time, maybe five, maybe eight minutes. So if y'all want to tune in um, to hear a couple poems, that would be really awesome. Um, so I'm going to lower the music here. Um, anybody interested in reading what they wrote? And again, this isn't like, let's read final products. This is, let's read a draft, a work in progress. Um, anybody out there want to share? Or you can even talk about process of what you're interested in exploring, maybe where you got stuck or you're feeling really good. I can share. Yes, Monica, please, that'd be awesome. So um, the two words that I chose were, sorry, I have my fan on. <laughs> um, so the two words that I chose were womb and death. Um, so yeah, I'll start reading it. So mm -hmm. womb. Cosmos bursting with magic wonder, a sacred space blossoming with flowers, diosas in la tierra, mm. death, extinguishing the sun, a, bur a burial, a tomb, the earth on fire, hombres en el cielo, womb, death, cosmos bursting, extinguishing the sun with magic wonder, a burial, a sacred space, a tomb, blossoming with flowers, the earth on fire, Diosas en la tierra, hombres en el cielo. Damn, Monica, that's not fair. <sighs> Tomb, the earth on fire, and it works both ways. <sighs> awesome. How do you feel, Monica? I had fun. Good. I'm so yeah, happy. Thank you for facilitating this. You're welcome. Thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. Oh, so good. Oh, and then also in the chat, I saw that Arthur wanted to read earlier. Author, I'm also opening the floor if you wanted to share anything. My yeah. apologies. My apologies for missing that. It's it's all good, my friend. Thanks so much, Carla. Oh, I just want you. to say what a dope workshop you put together. Um, amazing poems and Gabriel, that contrapuntal was just mm -hmm. so dope. I try to write one right now, and I realized the difficult of poeting to do that. So mm -hmm. hats off to you, my man. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna read a, a draft of the first one I did for Borders. Because mm -hmm. um, that synonym for Borders was dope too. So this is what I got. Uh, borders. Fence, an imaginary line, a signature of victory at the expense of a skull, mm. a translator of fields, a trader of grass, the color green reminding me of my executed friends. Paintings that lie, paintings that lie down, paintings that lie down in the rhythm of victory, 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 victory. Paintings that bow down to maps, an invention like a telephone to separate our love. I call up a dead friend on a disconnected line, a partition between a dream and an obliterated collarbone a mechanism for trade, zinc for laughter, fire for jokes, a geopolitical divide that ignores the wall, the wall, the unshingled rooftop festered with pigeons, the opposite of joy, antithesis to holding hands, to force queerness as a definition of distance, as in man, you're gay, or don't be so queer, as in a line denying strangeness, from beauty, a strange boundary, a phantom rule that promotes blood, an urge to surge a needle in the vein, a distinction of history etched in dye, a king traced in dark laces of laughter, a president who clears a path through a sea of people, a contract strained with tea, a voided tree lot of dead wood, a city crawling inside of land, my dead friends leave a message on a disconnected line, the air canceling the trespass of bullets. And the workshop is over. No, I'm just kidding. My work here is done. <laughs> hey, good job, yo. That was amazing. Uh, there's so many lines, so many lines. Yo, that synonyms prompt work for you. I really, really, I'm down. Aha, the images. Someone said haunting. That, that's what it is. Aha, how'd it feel? It felt amazing. Uh, just the way you talked about the poems uh, really invigorated uh, something inside me to write and you, the poems were amazing and the prompt the way it was just got me to go. Thanks. Okay. It felt good. <laughs> Arthur, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, and of course, please email me a copy of that poem. I would love to read it again. 
I would love to read it. Uh, anybody else out there want to try their contrapuntal or the synonyms if they want to go back to that, if that was speaking to them? Um, floor is yours. Um, I'll read my synonym poem because I did not get that far with the contrapuntals. No problem. Okay. Um, okay. I did synonyms for border as well. Mm -hmm. And rather than specific words, I did uh, experiences. One, you and Lydia dream together in the garden and there's a wall of ivy that might as well be stone that burns my feet. Mm -hmm. Two, not knowing how to read or write my first language that I'm fluent in until I'm 25. Three, untethered. I do not belong here. I do not belong in my ancestral home. Four, the home you uh, went, oh, the time you went to London and never came back. Five, the garden. It's always the garden. What limbs I'd give to see behind the ivy. Okay, that's it. Awesome, thank you so much. I also love that you separated it in numbers to just kind of further emphasize kind of those Polaroid pictures uh, for your synonyms. So thank you for that. Uh, I love it. I love it so much. Thank you for sharing that. Was that Nor? Did I say that correctly? You did, yes. Nor, thank you so much. And Nor, thanks for dropping um, some wisdom earlier in the chat about um, Brandon's poem. I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm like I'm living. Here. I'm living. Yes, Corinne, please. I did a contrapuntal. It's very much a draft. I'm about it. Let's do okay. it. <laughs> um, Ugh, I'm nervous. Um, it's white Mexican. Mm -hmm. um, I'll always pass, but my roots confuse them. They will ask anyways, trying to place me. When I answer, it's never what they want to hear. I'm that white Mexican. Mexican. They can always tell before I say a word, speaking to me in a native tongue, waiting for me to respond. I don't mirror their assumption, and I get that look. Their eyes looking down away from me, I don't belong. I always pass, but they can always tell. My roots confuse them before I say a word. They ask anyways, speaking to me in a native tongue, trying to place me, waiting for me to respond. When I answer, I don't mirror their assumption. It's never what they want to hear. It's, uh oh, and I have to explain. Oh, it's never what they want to hear, and I get the look, and I have to explain their eyes looking away and down, that I'm that white Mexican, I don't belong. Mm, thank you. I don't mirror their assumption. Damn, it's a great line. How do you feel, Corinne? Terrifying. Terrifying, but do you feel a little less terrified or do you feel a little more like, I think I can be in this fear a little longer and see what happens? Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, good. Very good. And you know that that's kind of like the philosophy, right? Is like as writers, how do we make these explorations of self? We got to be in spaces of discomfort, safe, but spaces of discomfort. And then we make those nice discoveries. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, anybody else before we close out today? I would love to share. It's really short, my contrapuntal. I would love you to share, Blanca, please. Yeah. Oh, Bianca. Is that an L or an I? I can't read. And I, Bianca, yes, please. Mostly because I like had such a like irritated reaction to this assignment, <laughs> and then I actually like came up with something. So, um, okay, I just I chose the words heaven and hell. Heaven, a crowded table holding eye contact, the energy between you and me. Mm -hmm. Hell, in the dusty corners of my memory, with the one who salted my wounds breaking open and together a crowded table in the dusty corners of my memory holding eye contact with the one who salted my wounds the energy between you and me breaking open holding eye contact with the one who salted my wounds and you being all resistant thank you thank you for giving this prompt a chance you're doing some great stuff Thank you, thank you, who salted my room. Yeah, I agree, Arthur, that is a fire line. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for sharing. All right, gang, anyone else?
um, my <laughs> share. partner um, who somehow wanted to or wanted to contribute wants to only share his voice. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want to read a poem. You wrote one. Can you read it? Uh, no, I, oh, okay. He's only gonna read it, but he so wants. Who's, it, who's this coming on screen? Um, this is my my boyfriend, who's he kind of like sat in on the workshop. What's your boyfriend's name? Gordon. Gordon? Yes. All right, everybody, give it up for Gordon. And what's the name of this type of poem? A contra. Contra plental. Contra plental. All right, so there's, there's two of them. The first one's called Mirror, and it says, "You are unworthy of the love given freely by fools." And there's a second poem, Shattered. Beautiful on your worst day, in the undue stress you put in yourself, I feel those who live in your heart are not but the wings that make you free. And then you combine them and you have, you are beautiful on your worst day and unworthy of the undue stress you put on yourself. The love I feel given freely by those who live in your heart are not fools, but the wings that make you free. Are not fools, but the ones who make you free. Uh, Thank you, guest Gordon, for tuning in and listening and feeling inspired to write a contrapuntal. That's hard. <laughs> That's doing the good work. No, but you, you did some good work. Thank you for sharing. Thank awesome. you. Anyone else? Yeah, can I share? Uh, who's that? Be Belen. Oh, Belen. Yes, please. Okay. So my two words were wild and silent. Awesome. Free as can be until they come back. I don't give a fuck. I never date. I never dare say. Sometimes I scream not to their face. Who would have thought your love is my captivity? Freedom unknown, secure and safe. Can you read that last line again, please? Freedom unknown, secure and safe. Hmm. I love how those two contradict each other so much, but it speaks so much truth, right? This idea of safety and freedom and not having access to it, but wanting it at the same time. So Melissa's like, your love is my captivity. I love it, love it, love it. Thank you, Belen, I appreciate it. So um, I, don't, I don't wanna take up too much time. I would love to invite Gabe back to close us out with a final read. I don't know if this is true, Gabe. I think I'm gonna call this an ekphrastic poem inspired by Fat Joe's poem uh, song. So if y'all know Fat Joe, uh, you will know the song and the ekphrastic uh, borrowings uh, that Gabe used as an entry, entry point to tell this story. Um, Gabe, would you do us the honor? Also, Gabe, I, I copy pasted this from the rumpus and the formatting got weird, so my apologies on that. <laughs> now you're good. <laughs> I don't know, Gabe, what'd you think? Would, would you call this a necrastic? Did you feel like it was a necrastic when you wrote it? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. For sure. For sure. After Terror Squad and Fat Joe. Um, yeah, and I'd say maybe even a little bit of a reclamation because I don't know how I feel about Fat Joe, but this, this is a portal for me to walk through. <laughs> okay. Uh, Fat Joe at the ninth grade dance. My niggas don't dance, we just pull up our pants and hug ourselves when we are sure no one else will. We cradle the gangly architecture puberty left us, five feet, 10 inches of ash and bone in the most crisp white tees our mother's ironing boards could conjure. Fists clenched around any baseline that promises to swell our sharp elbows a suit of armor. Cause ever since Ty got armpit hair and started flexing muscles that even make the teachers look twice, Ever since we grew taller than our girlfriends and thought ourselves men. Ever since Maria got pregnant and Jeremy got his teeth kicked in and we saw them break like dice across the school parking lot. Ever since then, my niggas don't smile. My niggas don't dance. My niggas square up. My niggas carve Ona and Radius into sword and shield. My niggas turn quiet survival tactics cacophony each time we lean back. I'll give it up for Gabe. Please, Gabriel Cortez, it was an absolute pleasure. I'm texting Gabe, I'm like, hey, can you come read a poem for me? And he's like, I will be at the workshop either way. So thank you so much for just like reading and sharing your work and talking about the process. I really, really appreciate it. 
Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me into the space. And this is great. I was telling Carla, like, I was planning to come through to this workshop just to participate anyways, because I've been like hearing about these things. Um, and so, yeah, it's such a great way to, to be here. So thank you, y'all. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I put G Gabe, I hope it was okay to him. I'll just spit in your uh, Instagram on there. And Gabe does a lot of good work with his writing as well in the community. So if you want to continue to follow him and read some of his work, I put the link there. He has, I think, two other poems on the rumpus, I believe. Um, so please click on that, check him out, support our poets, support each other. Um, to close out before we have Daniel come in, of course, I want to just do a little dance with my stick figure and say thank you all so much for coming through. It means the world during a time when we can't be with our poetry communities that we can still bridge community through Zoom. And so this gives me life. Um, so thank you for doing that work for me and for showing up and for writing and for saying yes to new forms. Um, so we covered the ekphrastic, synonyms, a contrapuntal. I also put Not a Cult's information below. Please continue to buy books directly from Not a Cult. Check out our future workshops, support the authors. Don't go to Amazon, Amazon's the devil. Um, their link and Instagram are there below. Um, I'm also providing my Instagram um, link there. If you go and click on the bio, there's a free PDF copy of my first chat book, Grasshoppers Before Gods, if y'all wanna check that out. Um, Daniel Lisi, the wonderful uh, co-founder of Not A Cult, did you wanna jump in and say anything else about future happening?